in this lesson, we want to talk about finding the determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix. So in the last lesson, we talked about the Laplace expansion method, which is also known as the cofactor expansion method for finding the determinant. Now, using this method, we know the determinant for any n by n matrix, any square matrix, can be found as the sum of the entries in any row, or you can do a column, multiplied by their respective cofactors. Okay, so we saw that for kind of working with a three by three, this process really wasn't that bad. It's a little bit tedious, but it's not that bad. And then we also found a shortcut for the three by three that made the process very, very simple and quite a bit less tedious. Well, when we start working with a four by four or higher, we might need to kind of look at an alternative strategy because we don't have such a shortcut for that. So I want to introduce a strategy that you can use. In some cases, it's going to be a little bit better than the kind of Laplace expansion method. In other cases, it won't be. OK, but at least you have another tool in your toolkit to kind of find determinants for something that's a four by four, five by five, a six by six, if you had to do it by hand. So the first thing we need to do today is introduce kind of a new term for us in our matrix algebra section. And this is known as a triangular matrix. So first and foremost, you have a lower triangular matrix, which occurs when a square matrix has all entries above the main diagonal as zeros. Remember, when we talk about these kind of diagonal entries, the row number and the column number are going to be the same. So row one, column one, that's that entry there. Row two, column two, that's that entry there. Row three, column three, that's that entry there. Okay, so going down those kind of diagonal entries, you could say this main diagonal. If I look above that, the entry should be all zeros, okay, which is what we have here for the lower triangular matrix, or you could say this matrix is in lower triangular form. Now, similarly, when we look at the upper triangular matrix, this is going to occur when all the entries below the main diagonal are zeros. So again, here's your main diagonal and all your entries below are zeros. OK, so the reason we're kind of showing you this is because there's a very special property when you work with a triangular matrix. OK, so this could be the lower triangular form or the upper triangular form. Basically, your determinant can be found by finding the product of those diagonal entries. OK, so I can just go down the main diagonal and say that my determinant for this matrix U is equal to A times B times C. OK, that's all it's going to be. Similarly, if I come up here to matrix L, OK, I can say that the determinant, let me make that a little better. OK, the determinant for L is going to be again A times B times C. So I think you see where we're going with this. We're going to give you a four by four kind of matrix. And then essentially you're going to use some row operations to put it into kind of this upper triangular matrix format. OK, where you have zeros below this kind of main diagonal. And then you can find the determinant by just finding the product of those entries along the main diagonal. Now, before we can kind of jump into this process, we have to talk about some of these properties of determinants. There's a few of these. I'm just going to focus on three of them. The ones that involve what happens when you perform row operations on a matrix. So let's talk about the first one. The first one is where we swap two rows or you could say interchange two rows. Or you could also say this happens when you interchange two columns. OK, so first and foremost, what's the determinant of this two by two matrix? We know that we start by multiplying down one times four is four. Then we subtract away. You can multiply up or you can multiply down. It doesn't matter. Two times three is six. So this gives me negative two. OK, so what happens if we swap two rows here? Well, what's going to happen is the sign of the determinant will change. The absolute value will be the same, but the sign will change. So instead of negative two, you'll have positive two. So if I put three and four in the first row and one and two in the second row, again, the sign will change. It will be positive two. If I multiply down, three times two is six, and then minus, if I multiply up, one times four is four. So this is positive two. So it's just a sign change. Okay, so that's all it is. The second one that you need to understand, if we multiply a row, okay, a row by some non-zero real number, then essentially you can just multiply the determinant by that same non-zero real number. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say that I multiplied a row one here by positive two. So instead of one, I have two. Instead of two, I have four. OK, and I'm just doing this to row one. Row two will be unchanged. So that's going to be a three and a four. 
So the effect it's going to have is it's going to change this by a factor of 2. So I can just take negative 2, the old determinant, multiply by 2 to get the new determinant. So this guy will be equal to negative 4. And again, you can prove this. If I multiply down, 2 times 4 is 8. And then minus, if I multiply up, 3 times 4 is 12. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Now, this isn't going to come up today, okay? But you do need to know this for future kind of lessons, especially if you get into a linear algebra course. Now, let me show you the one that we're going to use the most today. And this is very important. We know that when we kind of perform row operations to kind of change an entry, let's say we want this to be a zero, for example, we can multiply one of the rows by some non-zero real number and add the result to a given row, okay? And we can replace the row with that. And the way your book will normally say this is it'll say, if you replace a row with the sum of that row and a non-zero constant multiple of some other row, when this occurs, you're gonna have no change to the determinant. Okay, so that's very important to understand. So let's say, for example, I went through and I multiplied the top row by two. So two times row one, okay, who would that be? So we would have two and then we would have four. And then I added the result to row two and that's what I replaced row two with. So let me kind of move this over because I'm gonna run out of room. I'm just gonna put this up here for now. And I forgot my plus sign. And so I know that multiplying two times row one would give me a two and it would give me a four. I'm gonna add these two results to this bottom row and the top row will be unchanged. So let me just kind of scooch this over for a second. So I'm gonna put one and two, those are unchanged, I'm not doing anything. Two plus three is going to be five and four plus four is going to be eight, okay? So everyone should understand what I did there. This is something we did when we did our Gaussian elimination, our Gauss-Jordan elimination. Again, I'm just multiplying a given row, which was row one by a non-zero row number, which was two. And then I added that result to the entries that were in this row two. That's what I replaced row two with, okay? So two times one was two, two plus three was five. That's how I got that. Two times two was four, four plus four is eight. That's how I got that. So what we're saying is if you perform this operation, there will be no change to the determinant, right? So the determinant should still be negative two, and it is. If we multiply down, one times eight is eight, and then minus, if we multiply up, five times two is 10, eight minus 10 is negative two, okay? So with that being said, let's take a look at an example. So we have this four by four matrix. Again, the vertical bars tell us to take the determinant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy these kind of numbers. We'll go to a fresh sheet. So we have three, one, four, and 10. We have two, negative one, six, and three. We have zero, negative five, three, and negative two. We have one, zero, one, and five. Okay, so let me copy everything here and let's go to this fresh sheet and we'll have plenty of room. I'm gonna put my vertical bars here again to tell me that I wanna find the determinant. Again, I'm thinking about kind of this main diagonal here, all the entries below, I want those to be zeros, okay? If I achieve that through these kind of row operations, then what happens is the determinant will be found as the product of those kind of entries going down that main diagonal. But remember, if we end up swapping two rows, which we're gonna do here, you gotta take and make it the negative of what you find as the determinant there. And again, we'll see that as we go on. So let's start out by just kind of working on this first column. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this one, okay, to get a zero here and here, and then I'm gonna swap rows, okay? So let's go through that. I'm gonna multiply my row four by negative two, and I'm gonna add the result to row two, okay? That's what I'm gonna change row two with. So let me just go through and do the multiplication first. So negative two times one is negative two. Negative two times zero is zero. Negative two times one is negative two, and negative two times five is negative 10, okay? So now if I add these to the entries in row two, negative two plus two is obviously zero. Zero plus negative one is still negative one. Negative two plus six is going to be positive four. And then negative 10 plus three is negative seven. All right, so let's erase this and this. So I'm gonna use my one again to get this into a zero. So I'm gonna multiply row four, okay, row four, by negative three. I'm gonna add the result to row one. That's what I'm gonna change row one with. So negative three times one is negative three. Negative three times zero is zero. Negative three times one again is negative three. And then negative three times five is negative 15. Okay, so adding negative three plus three is going to be zero. And we know that zero plus one is still one. Negative three plus four is one. 
And then if we do negative 15 plus 10, that's negative five, okay? So good to go there. Let me erase this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap row four and row one. So row one will swap with row four, okay? And again, if we do that, we've gotta change the sign of the determinant. So I'm gonna put a negative one out in front to remind me to multiply the determinant of this new kind of matrix that I'm forming by this kind of negative one to find the determinant of that original matrix, which is up here, okay? So if we go back, let me kind of copy this, zero, one, one, and negative five. So I can erase that and let me grab this. So one, zero, one, and five. And then I'm gonna write this in here. So zero, one, one, and my negative five, okay? So we're good to go. And again, I put that negative one out in front. If you wanna keep track of it a different way, you can, you can put a negative one on top. As long as you remember that, you know, when the end process, we multiply down that diagonal, you've got to take that and then multiply it by negative one to find the determinant of, again, that original matrix you started with. All right, so let's look at our main diagonal now. So that's this guy right here. And I wanna make that negative five into a zero and that one into a zero. So let's start with that negative five because it's a little bit harder to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply row four. I'm gonna multiply row four, which has a one in it, okay, by positive five. I'm gonna add the result to my row three. That's what I'm gonna change row three with. So five times zero is zero. Five times one is five. Five times one is five again. Five times negative five is negative 25. So let's do our addition now. Zero plus zero is zero. Five plus negative five is zero. We know that five plus three is eight. We know that negative 25 plus negative two is negative 27. Okay, and let's erase this. And now I wanna make this guy into a zero. I can easily do that by just adding this row two to row four, okay? That's just like me saying that I have one times row two plus row four. And that's what I'm gonna replace row four with. Because again, if I had negative one and I added it to one, that would give me zero. So zero plus zero is obviously zero. Negative one plus one is zero. We have four plus one, which is five, okay? And then we have negative seven plus negative five, which is negative 12. So we're good to go there. And now all I need to do, again, if I look down these kind of diagonal entries, the last thing I need is to change the five into a zero, but you might be tempted to use this kind of one here, right? Because it's easy to say, okay, if I multiply row one by negative five, add the result to row four, this guy would be a zero, but you have a problem there because this is a one, okay? So that's not gonna work because you're gonna end up changing this. It won't be a zero anymore. So what you're gonna have to do is use row three here. So I'm going to figure out what I need to multiply row three by that when I add row three to row four, okay, this guy ends up being a zero. So in other words, eight, this entry right here times what, let's just say it's X is equal to negative five, which is the opposite of that number there. Okay. So if I divide both sides by eight, I find that X is negative five eighths. So I would say negative five eighths times my row three, this row right here, plus my row four, that's what I'm gonna replace row four with. So I know negative five eighths times zero and times zero again would be zero and zero. Negative five eighths times eight would give me negative five, right? We already know that. And then negative five eighths times negative 27, we know that would be positive. What is five times 27? Well, that's 135, okay? So this would be 135 over eight. Okay, so now let's go through and add. So obviously zero plus zero in each case is gonna be zero. You can get rid of that. Negative five plus five is zero. You can get rid of that. So really the only thing we have to kind of work on is this. So we're gonna add negative 12. And so to get a common denominator, I would say this is negative 96 over eight. So if I do 135 minus 96, I'm gonna get 39. So this would be 39 eighths. Okay, so that's gonna be that entry there. So 39 eighths, okay? So nice and easy, not too bad. So now finding the determinant is pretty easy because we just go down this kind of main diagonal because everything below is a zero, okay? We can just multiply those entries, okay? Again, this is when you're in upper triangular form, which is what we have here. Now, don't forget we swapped rows. So that's why we have this negative one out here. So I'm gonna lead with that and say that my determinant would be negative one times 
1 times, you've got negative 1, times you've got 8, times you've got 39 eighths, okay? So what's going to happen is you have a negative 1 here and a negative 1 here. Those will basically cancel. That's positive. So you can cancel this 8 with this 8, and you have 39 as your answer. So the determinant is positive 39. So if we go back, we could say this is equal to positive 39.